He doesn't share his spotlight with anybody for any reason. You see, because God is a jealous God. And as we come to him, we come to him with a mind and with a spirit to worship him in spirit and truth. So Father, we thank you for ushering in your Holy Spirit. We thank you for saturating us with your anointing. We thank you for covering us in your blood. And because we're covered, Lord, we can make our request known unto you. And whatsoever John said, whatsoever we ask in his name, yeah. and he be glorified. Yeah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. He says, that I will do. Yeah. But you have to be in love with me. Yeah. And I know you love me when you keep my commandments. You should. Hallelujah. 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 It feels good to be able to ask the Master.
God has kind of placed in our hearts a spirit of prosperity. Amen. And in a spirit of prosperity, there has to be newness. You see the farmer plants in the fall or in the winter or in the spring, they say he plant, but it's already down there. But he doesn't get his new growth until the spring of the season. Winter is just about over for us, being in the, you know, native Charlotte, North Carolina land. You know, it doesn't get too awfully cold. Amen. Amen. So, so, so we're starting to see buds already coming up. Amen. Trees are starting to put forth their blooms. And, and we're starting to see new life. And I believe God is allowing walking by faith to bloom. Yeah. Amen. To bud. Amen. And to cause an increase. Amen. Abraham said something for us because Abraham started out on his journey way back when God told him to get out from among his kindred and go into a land where he would show him. And once he got to that land, God showed him that I'm going to make you the father of many nations. Every, every family after this shall lead of your seed. And God blessed Abraham. And he blessed him in the city. He blessed him in the fields. He blessed him when he came and he blessed him when he went. Amen. He blessed him when he rose and he blessed him when he laid down. God blessed Abraham. And Abraham waxed great across the nation. But in every Foreign season. We have to understand that we pick up things along the way. I'm going to get to the word here. And Abraham had amassed much riches. Yeah. And even to the point that God had blessed him and Sarah with that one thing that they wanted of the Lord. A yoga. And see, that was a milestone. And I'm going to liken that to walking by faith just a little bit as we move on. After seven years, deep in Miller, God blessed us to buy a parcel of land. Yes, you have. I mean, from a garage to a school yes. to a borrowed building. To another borrowed building. He blessed us. He blessed us. And everywhere we went, God blessed us. And he added to the church daily such as should be said. A lot of folks say, y'all ain't got that many people. But no, 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 no. God's numbers are different from our numbers. So the greatest request that Abraham and Sarah made was that they have a son that was going to be the bone. To his great wealth and possessions. Would carry his name. But watch this here. After so many years, Abraham and Sarah enjoyed Isaac. After seven years into our eighth year, God has blessed us to enjoy the fact that we are now owners of a piece of land. Amen. Amen. But Abraham, just like us, at some point is going to have to have a very difficult test. Amen. And I want to use Abraham's test to prepare us for our test. Amen. 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 And y'all going to have to go with it because you haven't seen our test yet. Come on. It's coming. Yeah. But watch Abraham's test because there are seven things that took place concerning Abraham's test. Amen. Amen. It was a great test. Mm -hmm. And I think today we're going to see that one of our great tests is going to be that we've got to get out. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Of this old building. Come on. Mm -hmm. Nobody is taking a 
shoe or stick or broom and, and sweeping us out. But our time here is for spent. Yeah. And it's time for a change. Yeah. And whenever you start dealing with new birth, new growth, gaining new territory, amen, God sends a new order. Yeah. And walking by faith, we got that order. Yes, we do. It's time to move. But let's watch Abraham's move for a second. Amen? Abraham's great trial came in chapter 1. Uh, excuse me, verse number 1 of chapter 22. And it came to pass after these sayings that God did try, tempt, challenge Abraham. You can look at tempt all you want and know that the devil tempts you, but the Bible says in James that God tempts no man. But you have to understand the meanings of words. Yes. Amen? Amen. So God needed to test Abram. Mm -hmm. And God said to Abram, Abraham. And Abraham said, Behold, here am I. In every great challenge, in every great test, God's children has the first responsibility to answer God. Yes, you got to move when God says move. Yes, but he won't tell you where to go until you recognize that he'll talk to you. Amen. A lot of times we hear everybody else, but we don't hear God. Amen. Amen. My wife can call me, and you know what? There's something about a wife's call that makes a husband move. <laughs> and it should be vice versa, something about a husband. Trying to beat up your friend or, or, or the preacher or the deacon or whomever 
says, yes. Here am I. And God says, I want you to take your only son, Isaac, mm -hmm. whom thou loveth. And I want you to get thee into the land of Moriah. And I want you to offer him there for a burnt offering mm -hmm. upon one of the mountains, yeah. which I will tell thee of. Yeah. Watch this now. Here's the thing. Point three. There are many mountains in our lives. Yeah. We can't get stuck on one mountain. No, we can't. This is just one of the things that God is going to have us to do in this great trial, in this great test. Don't say, woe is me, when you get two or three things that's hitting you in the face and you think God is doing too much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those mountains represent territory. Mm -hmm. Those territories, what Abraham is what eventually was going to conquer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because God says, I'm going to give you all this land. So even though God gave it to Abraham, there was other people in the land. Yes, he did. But God says there's one mountain that I want you to climb. Amen? Amen. And I want you to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. Yes. Watch this, 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 this mesmerizing task. Number one, now he's got to climb a mountain yes. to get there to offer the sacrifice that he doesn't want to offer because it's his son that he loves. Number two, he's got to leave his wife after giving her the bad news. And you know what? Sometimes, this is what my dad used to tell me a long time ago, son, sometimes you don't need to let the right hand or the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Sometimes you just need to keep your mouth shut about some things that God is dealing with you on. Yeah. You just go and do it, and that's where this old cliche comes. It's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Because if he had told Sarah, I'm going to take Isaac up to the mountain, and I'm going to sacrifice him, Sarah was going to just straight up. Yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. Not my baby. And a lot of times in our ministry, God wants to do a thing with us, but we get our wives and our husbands involved, and that can't happen because they fight against God, and you're stuck in the middle. Yes, sir. Sometimes I get caught up like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. But God, he always rescues. Amen. If we let him, because we have to eventually say to our loved ones, listen, God already told you and me both that if we don't deny him, our father and our mother, our sister and our brother, and take up our cross and follow him, we can't be his disciples. Yes, yes. So I don't want you to get caught up in that, but I didn't do it because, you know what, my wife had a problem. No, 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 that's your excuse. Watch this. So now he's got all of these mountains he's got to deal with. But out of all of the mountains, God's got it focused on one mountain. Yeah. And guess what this one mountain is? It's not even the place. It's not Mount Moriah. No, it's not. It's not the Mount of Moriah. It is the fact that he's got something now that God says could eventually come before him. Yeah. How many of y'all remember when I said God is a jealous God? Yeah. God is a jealous God. You've got some stuff right now okay. that's going to bother you on this move. I'm here to tell you the truth of the matter. You got some stuff that's going to keep you from wanting to make this move. Yeah. God has already called out. He didn't call you. Yeah. Because you're not the pastor. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can think about this office all you want to, but God is a God of order. Yes, he, he functions in, in what the Bible says in, in decency and in order. Mm -hmm. He's not going to call Deacon Miller and tell Deacon Miller, I want you to move to church. Mm -hmm. He's not going to call Forrest and tell Forrest, no, he's going to talk to Pastor Denton, and that's where it's going to happen. Amen. And either it's up to me to be obedient, or then he'll get another vessel. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Yes, so God is a God of order. So when he talks to Abraham, he's talking to the head. And when he says, I want your only son that you love, he's telling Abraham, this is the test to see how much you love me. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. So you got some stuff that you love. I don't know what it is. But I need you to start putting your finger on it now. Yeah. I need you to start sitting back and determining what is going to keep me from following the command of God. Amen. I didn't just wake up one morning and say I want to be a member of this church. I didn't wake up one morning and say I'm going to be a walker by faith. Amen. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. God brought you here. He sent you here. You've been here for a reason and for a season. And now God is saying, okay, let me see.
see how much they really love me. All right. I don't know what you have, but I know what I got. You know, sometimes we're comfortable. We're comfortable here. It's a nice place, but it's just not ours. Shout out. And in order to get to where God wants us to be, we got to move closer. Move closer. Amen. Amen. I told y'all when we bought the land, we're not going to be out here in the wilderness for no 40 years. Amen. Amen. We're not going to do that. Matter of fact, we put ourselves on a sailor's plan and pay this land off. And I, de look, Amen. I declare Amen. that at the end of this year, that's going to be done. Yes, Amen. 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 And at the beginning of next year, we'll be breaking ground. Yes, Amen. Amen. It's in my spirit. It's in my heart. And I got to go because there's a whole lot of other things that I want to do. Yeah. But this is most important. Yeah. Because this is what God wants us to do. So here it is. Abraham picks Isaac up and gets his men and the mule. And they begin the journey. Mm -hmm. Point number four. Amen. You can't sit down when you receive instructions. Amen. Amen. You can't sit down when you receive the instructions. You got to move. You got to move. This is a weakness of mine, and God has put people around me to help me with this weakness. Because I'm so concerned about the flock, I don't want to move too fast because I might lose one or two, so I move too slow. And that's what a lot of pastors have a problem with. They want to get everybody nice and neat, but God told us I would that all be saved. But he knew it wasn't going to happen. Amen. Amen. Amen? So here's the thing. He's saying to me, now I gave you from the time I prompted you over almost a year ago that we had to do this thing. Yeah. <coughs> so now it's time to do it. It's time to do it. He's given us a year advance notice. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all know that? Amen. It's time to do it. Yeah. It was March or sometime last year. That he talked to us about this. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. Abram got up and he started to get busy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He didn't even know what mountain. No. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. I don't know exactly where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I don't know what mountain it is. But Abraham got up and he said, Come on, let me get two of the men together. Amen. Because that's about all I'm gonna need. Let me get out and get the wood, get the knife, get the fire, because we got a journey to take. Come on over here, y'all follow me. And he left. I don't think he had a meeting. Mm -hmm. no, Sometimes church meetings are important. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Y'all be mad at me later. He just got up and he went. He didn't call the plan together. Oh, Say, yeah. I will be gone for a few days. Take care of your wife. Take care of your children. He got up and he left. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, the Bible says, and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass, and he took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and claimed the wood and the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Mm -hmm. He wasted no time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. He was ready for the journey. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the journey will lead us to Calvary. Yeah. Jesus had a journey that led him to Calvary. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He didn't waste no time. Only 33 years. The last three years was a journey to Calvary. Yeah. But that, that wasn't it. Watch as Abraham's faith in Isaac's resurrection. Mm. Abraham's faith in Isaac's resurrection. Yeah. I don't know about you, but you got to stop looking at things with your naked eye. Yeah. The name of this church is Walking by Faith Community Church. Yeah, yeah. The scripture is from 2 Corinthians, amen, 5 and 7. Mm -hmm. Walking by faith means that I walk not by sight. Amen. But I walk by faith. Amen. Now, now watch this. When you're going through your great trial, you cannot be looking at things as the world presents them. Yeah. Amen. If you look at your bank account when it comes to sacrificing to the building fund because of this very zealous deal we have, amen, amen. and your bank account is on E, and you said, okay, that's it, bottom line, we gotta stop. <laughs> you eat walking by sight. <laughs> if Abraham had said, you know what, I got one son, and this is a son that my seed is supposed to populate the rest of the world with. If you had to say, now if I sacrifice him, yeah. amen, then what's going to happen to my seed? Yeah. I got to do something to make sure God's promise is fulfilled. Mm -hmm. now, now, let, me, let me tell you, that's the way we think. Mm -hmm. We 
think that God made a mistake by giving us the assignment. So we start to make concessions for God so that we can keep his promise to us so that Abraham will have Isaac and his seed will, will, will multiply as great as the stars and the sands on the seashore. So we got to do that. Amen? Are y'all with me? Yeah. So we got to save Isaac. Amen? So, so really I'm going to take somebody else. I'm not going to take Isaac, but that's what God promised him. He just made a mistake. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Abraham looked at the fact and said, you know what?
everybody in here ain't strong enough to have faith like we do. Everybody don't see it like we do. Everybody ain't able to just say, Lord, I only made this much a year, but I'm already pledging this much to you. Everybody ain't that strong. And God said, don't worry about it, just, just take it. Yeah. You hide that from the Lord. They're going to be okay. Because they love me, and I know they love me. But you're the one I'm interested in. Yeah. I need you to be obedient. Mm -hmm. Amen. So sometimes, daddies, you got to stand before your children. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, husband, you got to stand before your wife. Yeah. And you can't let them see all the bullets that's coming. Yeah. You got to stand there like Superman and know that God is already yeah. covered you. And you can run so Shoot me, but you can't take me out. Come on now. Hallelujah. So I'm, Hallelujah. 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 So I'm looking, I'm looking, and I'm, I'm going down, and, and I begin to see Abraham as he's, as he's now got the realization that God is going to uh, resurrect. I, he says, and Abraham said unto his young man, he says, Abide ye here, amen, with the hands. And I and my lad, amen, will go yonder and worship. Because you know that's what you do when you wait. You wait for somebody to get up. Y'all yeah. 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 living in some tough situation, but you crying when you should be worshiping. Yeah. Oh, worship the Lord in beauty and, and in holiness and exalt the Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good God, mm -hmm. you make a joyful noise yeah. unto the Lord all you land. Yeah. When you're in the midst of your trouble, when the storm is raging, when the billows are tossed, and don't cry. Go with him. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You're going to have to go with him. But well, watch it. He's praying. He's praying. And the realization is there. And now he says to Isaac, come on, son. Mm -hmm. Come on, son. Yeah. Here's the thing. Come on, walking by faith. Come on. Come on. I never once tried to take anything that wasn't duly right for me. Yeah. And then those things that I did receive, I tried my best to give them back in full. Amen. Amen. I tried to live a life. I tried never to bring embarrassment on you. I tried to always set an example that God was leading me. Amen. And therefore, it was okay to follow Christ as he led me. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Now, now, here's the thing. That's what I had. Yeah. I watched my father. Mm. My father has always been a man of God. Yeah. My father has always led me the right way. Yeah. And now, I gotta walk with my father, even though I don't know where I'm going. Yeah. Walking by faith, it might not look like it. everything is gonna be together. We might be tearing chairs down. We might be putting them up again. We might be doing all sorts of things that we didn't have to do here. But I want you to know how they live in the valley of the wilderness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They lived in tents. Yes, they did. Yes. The reason they lived in tents yeah. is because they we're not predestined on, to remain yeah. Yeah. in the wilderness. Yeah. So they would tear their tents down mm -hmm. every day. Every day. And they would move to the next spot. Yeah. Yeah. And they would put their tents up again. Yeah. And then they would move the next day. So they had to tear them down. It was a reoccurring thing. So we might be doing some stuff and you might be getting weary along the way. Lord, I'm so tired mm. of coming down here out of the earth. Mm. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. Yeah. But Lord. Not my will, yeah. but your will. Yes, yes. Can I do it as long as you tell me? I can say, come on, Dad, let's go. Mm. Yeah. It ain't in the Bible, but you know that's what he said. Yeah. Where you go, mm -hmm. I will follow. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he followed his dad. Mm -hmm. But you know what? That don't stop you. And that's why we tell you prayer is so important. Mm -hmm. Amen. Number five. Prayer is so important because as Isaac and his father walked, Mm. As he began to, you know, allow wisdom yeah. from his father mm. to emanate, preeminate, uh, watch, watch, watch this, watch, watch this. He allowed that wisdom that he had learned from his father to ask prudent and sound questions. Yeah. But then he said, you know what, You know, I, I see the wood. Mm -hmm. I see the fire. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Yes. In other words, I got the altar. Mm -hmm. We're going to worship. Yeah. It's going to be a sacrifice. Uh -huh. 
God will provide? God will provide. Amen. Oh, thank you for the sacrifice. Yes, sir. Are y'all with me? Yes, sir. How do you know that God will provide? Yes, sir. I'm almost finished now. Yeah. I'm going to start to take the scriptures and so you'll know that I'm not bringing this stuff up. And Abraham took his wood and he took the took the front offering and, and, and laid it on his son Isaac and, and, and they took the fire in his hand and he took the knife and he put it there and he says and they went both of them together. And verse number 7 says, And Isaac spake unto his father, Amen. Watch this. And this is so sweet. I just said it. And he said, Father. He said, Here I am. And, and, and his son says, Behold, the fire in the wood. But where is the lamb? For the burnt offering. Mm -hmm. And Isaac said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for the burnt offering. So, watch this. They kept going. Yeah. How, how many of y'all would take that? How many of y'all take these messages that God sends and, and you say, okay, that's what the Lord said. You know, and then if I didn't like the words that the pastor said, I went home and studied it for myself and then it was right there. That's what keeps you from forgetting what was preached last Sunday to this Sunday. Yeah. You go home and you study and show yourself a proof. Right. It's there. Yeah. I know he was telling the truth. I can see the application in my life. I can see the application in walking yeah. my faith life. I can see what's going on around us. It's true. The word is true. Yeah. So they, they kept going. And watch this verse number 8. And this is where it starts to get good. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for the blood offering. Verse number 9 says, And they came to the place where God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac, his son. Oh. And, and, and watch this. It's interestingly enough that he had tied him up. Because the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. Yeah. But the flesh is weak. weak. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Some of us need to be tied up in the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So that we can make this move. Yeah. Because otherwise you're going to run somewhere yeah. because it's going to get hard. Yeah. Mm. Amen? Amen. But I can't tie you. Mm. You got to be tied up and wrapped up and bound up in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Watch this. He says to us, and he tied him up, and he, you know, and, and, and he laid his son on the altar, and, and Abraham stretched forth his hand. Mm -hmm. See, see, this is this is where faith comes in. At. <clears throat> this is where faith comes in. At. And I don't know where you are. I don't know where you are. I don't know where you are right now. I don't know if you're willing to sacrifice the thing that you love. I don't know right. if you're willing to sacrifice your marriage to fall in love with Jesus. Yeah. I, I don't know if you're willing to sacrifice your house. I mean, the, 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 the creditors are calling every day. Yeah. And, and you can't make your payments. Mm. And you know you can't. And you keep on digging yourself in the hole. You can't. You done went out there and did all manner of things. And, and now God is saying, okay, I need to pull you out of that stuff. Yeah. I, I don't know if you love that stuff more than you love God. Amen. Amen. But Isaac knew that his father had made the sacrifice. He had already made up his mind. Here he is. Son. He didn't say a word. Same thing with Jesus. As they nailed him to the cross. Yeah. They stretched him wide. They hung him high. The Bible says they lifted him up, but he knew yeah. that if I be lifted up, yeah. that, that, that my father's going to draw yeah. all mankind to me. So when he was hanging up there on the cross, the Bible says, and he didn't say a mumbling word. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. He did not fuss with the people who were doing it to him because he understood that they were the reason why he was up there. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So much so that they stressed him why uh -huh. he hung his head and he died. I'm leaving a lot of stuff out of there. But I need to show you something. Abraham had his knife because he didn't want to even look at his son because he knew it wasn't about yeah. Isaac. Yeah. See, sometimes you think it's about the stuff. Yeah. And it's not about the stuff. No, it's, not. it's about your relationship yeah, that's it. with God. Yeah. That's it. God just wants to know if you love him. Yeah. That's the problem he had with Peter. Son, Peter, Come on. son of my daughter, do you love me? Yes, sir. Peter was quick to tell him the first time, Lord, you know I do. <laughs> but that wasn't good enough for God because he was talking about superficial love. Yeah. I'm here or not. Mm. Lord, I just, I just swam from my boat because I heard that it was you and I remember what I did. Yes, Lord, I love you. Mm. Simon Peter, you, do you love me more than me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. God is asking us to say, God, do you love me more than this stuff? Do you love me more than what your eyes can see? Is the world become your God? Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Say so. Are you living according to my spirit? Yeah. And then watch this. 
Abraham didn't even look at Isaac. He just took his hands up and he closed his eyes and he just began to pray. And he had already said, now, Lord, I know you're going to resurrect him. So let thy will be done. And he pulled his hand up. And when he was on his way to the top, he hit the pinnacle. Well, see, that was the pinnacle of faith. Yeah. Sometimes when everything seems but lost yeah. and you're right there at the top and you're on your downward spot, yeah. God has a way. Of stepping in. And saying even before Abraham made that place, that altar, and called it Jehovah Jireh, God had a way of stepping in and said, I see. I see. I see that you love me. I see where your heart is. I see nothing will come between you and me. I see. I see now, Abraham. Jehovah Jireh came and he began to look around. 